Welcome and thank you for joining us for the online encounter. Whether you're joining us from Omaha or anywhere in any part of the world, we want you to know that you're part of the Love Church family and we're glad that you're here. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications for our channel so that you never miss a message from Love Church. Now grab your Bibles and let's get started. All right, so we just got done singing the song, The Blessing, right? And how many of you had, had heard that before? Okay, you'd heard this song before. How many of you, that took you back to like when you were a kid and like the, uh, the priest or the pastor or the rabbi or whoever, they, they prayed the blessing over the congregation. Anybody remember that? Like that's kind of old school, right? We don't necessarily do that anymore. But here's the thing. In our world today, who God is is under attack. Like, and here's the thing, it's not just that God is under attack. God has been under attack for generations, but there's this, it seems like there's been this switch that's flipped over the course of the last decade where who God is is under attack. And so it seems like on one side, you've got people who want to discredit who God is. They wanna say that he doesn't exist, or they go so far as saying that God is a mean God. He's not a strong God. He's a weak God. They say things like, if God is so mighty and strong, why is he allowing such terrible things to happen on our earth, like wars and genocides and horrific sexual abuses all over the world? And so they sit there and they try to just discount him by saying, if there was a God, there's no way that he would possibly allow this, so there can't be a God, or that's a God I don't wanna believe in. Now, here's the thing. Many of us in this room are like, yeah, that's silliness. But there's this other extreme that's been happening in the church lately. And because we've forgotten who God is and who God is is under attack, what we do is we take God and we make him into how we want him to be. It's like the buffet God. Mm, I like that God died for my sins. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm supposed to go and live my life? Lay down my life? Oh, no, no, he, he already did that. I like the prosperity part, the, the blessing part. That's so awesome, but, but the whole surrendering part. Hmm. And so we buffet what we want, and we don't take God for who he is. And then when trouble comes, we wonder, well, why, why, did, why am I so angry at God? It's because we've got these two different extremes of who God is. But here's the thing. That's why number six, verses 24 through 26, is so vitally important. It's so incredibly important. And the funny thing is, is it's a really well-known verse. It's a verse that's on, on signs that we hang in our walls. It's on coffee cups, right? We, we see it on T-shirts, right? We have all sorts of fun sayings in the church, hashtag blessed, but, but what is blessing anyway? You see, Numbers 6, 24 through 26 is a powerful reminder of who God truly is. It's a reminder that he's our creator, our savior, and our king. So if you would, would everybody stand to their feet real quick? See, there's this old tradition in the church where when the word of God was, was read, that the people would stand up and hear the word of God, that it would be spoken over them and they would be able to listen. So I'm not even asking you to necessarily be in your Bibles right now. I'm just asking you to listen as I read this morning's word of God. Number six, verses 24 through 26 says this. The Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated. Okay, so what does blessed mean? Let's start there. This is called the blessing, right? So what does blessed really mean? And my guess is that when I say blessed, something comes to your mind, right? Maybe it's one of the many Instagram posts that you've seen where it does say hashtag blessed as it's a person with his wife with their sweet cars behind them in their house. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> right? Or their kiddo, right, gets an amazing scholarship to go play ball somewhere or to get a full ride to a school somewhere. Hashtag blessed. Right? Or maybe it's something like they go to a restaurant 
And it's a really nice restaurant. They get a great meal and they're like, hashtag blessed. And then later on, they're like, hashtag cursed. <laughs> but here's the thing. When, you, when I say blessed, most likely something comes into your mind. And maybe you're in the room right now and you're thinking to yourself, well, hashtag blessed, that's just, that's me. Blessed is my life. I am blessed and favored beyond measure. Highly blessed, highly favored. But when you say that, you're meaning because of all that God has given you or provided for you and, and everything. And here, here's the thing, don't hear me saying that that's wrong. It's just not far enough. But before I go any further, maybe there's some of you in this room that you're like, hashtag blessed. That's for somebody else. Man, I, if this message is about blessed, that's not me. The life that you've walked, the season that you're in. I mean, right, there's not a lot of us that are like, got a divorce today, hashtag blessed. Suffered a loss today, hashtag blessed. The closest person in my life died today, hashtag blessed. Maybe you're sitting here today and you're thinking to yourself, the blessings of God just don't apply to me. If that's you, I am so glad you're here today because the blessings of God do apply to you, especially the way that he says them. You see, oftentimes the enemy, one of the enemy's greatest tricks is to take a word that God intended for something huge and he makes it small. And so the enemy knows that if the blessing is the fact that God is with us and he is for us, then the greatest thing that he can do is make blessings seem like things. I'll put it to you this way. There was a, a time when I got to go out to a really nice restaurant and I knew that I was gonna have a great meal. It ended up being like steak and crab legs. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. <laughs> Just playing. So I didn't eat lunch. Because I was like, um, I'm gonna have my palate ready. The problem with not eating lunch is that about three o'clock in the afternoon, you're like, I gotta eat. And so I'm a notorious snacker. So when I got home from work before I was gonna go, we had about an hour and a half before we were gonna go out to this great meal, I decided to look in the pantry and just see what we had. I'll just have a little snack, a little snack. And I opened up the pantry, and as I started to open up the pantry, I noticed on the table next to it, there were some gummy bears. Anybody in here like some gummy bears? Mm -hmm. Not those Black Forest ones, right? Mm -mm, nope, Harborough Har or whatever they say. Gold bag till the day I die, let's go. So I smashed a couple of gummy bears. Mm, that didn't fill me up. Matter of fact, now I want something salty. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna like, oh sweet, sea salt and vinegar potato chips, Cape Cod in the house. So I, the bag was kind of low, so I was like, All right, I'll just have a couple. Right, a couple turned into sizable hands, handfuls. And then I got back into that, put the bag back in there with the like four, four crumbs that I can blame on my kids later. <laughs> and I spotted the Oreos. <laughs> -hoo -hoo -hoo! I better have two of those. Four Oreos later, I was like, okay. You know, that was not much substance. I should probably get something of substance. And I opened up the fridge, oh, String cheese and fully cooked bacon. Just wrap that around there. And... So we're driving to go eat this delicious meal and my stomach is like, what did you just do? <laughs> See, I didn't end up enjoying that meal very much. I only ate about half of it. And then you try to re... No, never mind. I missed out on the blessing of that meal because I was willing to take substitute blessings. Whether, and, and here's the thing, the substitute blessings actually ended up making my stomach hurt. And so I wasn't actually able to enjoy the real blessing. See, I'm convinced that in our life, a lot of times what we do is we take these little blessings all along the way and we put our hope in them. We think that they're gonna satisfy us. And when they don't satisfy us and we miss out on the big blessing of God, we actually get angry at God. Because I don't have, I wish I, I could have, I should have. And what ends up happening is we're like, God doesn't wanna bless me. 
And it's not that he doesn't want to bless you. In fact, he wants to give you his whole self. Want me to explain what that means? Okay. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. We're going to be in three verses today, y'all. And I'm going to preach for three hours on three verses. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Two hours and 45 minutes. We're good. Numbers 6, 24 starts this way. The Lord bless you and keep you. Now, do I have any like artists in the room, the creatives in the room? Oh, yes, okay, all right, cool. Seven of you, awesome, great. <laughs> and then there, here's the thing. The other, there's 7% of you that are creatives in the room. The other 93 have just forgotten what it feels like to be creative since you were a kid. Have you ever noticed that? 100% of kids are creative. So were you. Here's the thing. This is beautiful. We see this in English, and it's just, oh man, this is so good. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. His countenance be lifted up to you and give you peace. Oh, oh, that's so good. But in the Hebrew, this is beautiful, you guys. In the Hebrew, right, verse 24 is three Hebrew words. Then 25 is five Hebrew words, and 26 is seven. Right, The amount of consonants that are used in the Hebrew word go from 15 to 20 to 25. The amount of syllables go from 12 to 14 to 16. Why do I tell you this? Because this blessing is a beautiful love song to each and every one of us. And we miss that sometimes in the translation. But, you, but I want us to see this and to feel this. This is a beautiful love song of God to his people. In fact, the, the, the word the Lord, Yahweh, is named three times and you is six times because he just really wants us to get the point. The Lord bless you and keep you. What is he saying here? Sure, he's talking about may the Lord bless you with good crops and good animals, well, to the original audience, to riches, to good health, all of those things. But even more than that, he's saying the Lord bless you in his presence with you. Did you know that God is with you? That he is for you? That he knows you? Like, here's the thing. What God is telling his people is, do you wanna know who I am? I am a God that is with you every step of the way. I am a God who is for you. And as long as you walk with me, there is nothing that you can't handle. There is nothing that will come. He says, I bless you with my presence. And I keep you. What he's saying there is that I'm protecting you. I will keep you close. I will guard you. I will fight your battles. You guys, the set today couldn't have been any better for this message. Thank you, Jesus. It's this, he's the same God who blessed David and Moses. He's the same God who blessed Mary. He's the same God who's blessed generation to generation to generation. He's the same God that blessed them and kept them in his womb, like close to him. I want us to picture this of a God who stands in front as the enemy attacks. And that no matter where you go, he will keep you. He will stand there. He will fight for you. He is with you. These are monumental truths, you guys. It's a picture of God as a giver, a God who is willing to give himself to us, to bless us, to be with us, to keep us. Here's the thing. In your darkest moments, there may have been something that's like, where is God? And by the way, that's not uncommon, and that's not even weird, and that's not even wrong. David, throughout the Psalms, is constantly saying, Where are you? How long will you hide your eyes from me? He takes his complaint to the Lord, you guys, because he knows who God is. He knows that if he cries out to God, that God will reveal himself and say, I'm right here. I continue to bless you. I continue to keep you. I continue to protect you. I continue to guard you. I continue to stand with you. I will never leave you. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Who is God? He's a God who never leaves. Maybe as a kid, one of your parents left, and that's just sat with you for a long time. 
and you don't mean to, but you project that out on God, God will never leave you or forsake you. Maybe you suffered unbelievable loss. Maybe you lost a friend. Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you're sitting at home right now and the reason that you couldn't come to church today is because you didn't want to be around people because of all the things that have happened in your life, but you're seeking the Lord. I'm here to tell you today that God is with you and he is for you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. This is what this says here when it says that the Lord blesses you and he keeps you. He'll always be there. He'll always walk with you. And here's the beautiful thing. If I could make a pretty chart, it would say that like God bless and keep. Now the next two verses are gonna just expand on these two truths. Are you with me? Yeah. Right, cool. For those, those pie chart people, if I could draw the picture. we right, okay. So let's talk about what it means to bless you. That's in verse 25. Take a look. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. So in other words, when he says that God blesses you, it means that he's going to shine on you and grace for you. Shine on you and grace for you. That's what it means. Bless you means shine on you and grace for you. Now, here's the best part. This is God as our revealer. revealer. When, I, when you think of face shining on you, right, it's this, it's this brightness, this glow, and you know what happens when darkness meets light? Light wins. See, the, the beautiful thing about this is when this passage in the Hebrew is talking about that he shines on you, he reveals you. Now, here's the thing. Some of you might be sitting here thinking, oh, okay, I don't like that part. And you're trying to find some more darkness. That's not dark enough. <laughs> and you're sitting here thinking to yourself, like, if you knew what I'd done, I don't want to be it brought into the light. That's the last thing that I want. In fact, I feel more comfortable keeping my sin, my struggles, my battles, my junk, the stuff that's been done to me, the stuff that I've done in the darkness. That doesn't feel like a blessing which is why the next part is so important. I'm a child. I really wanted to just get up there and go. Sorry. And be gracious to you. Maybe you're here today and you're like, oh, I hide my sin because I'm afraid of judgment. God is a judging God. The church is full of judging people. And what God is trying to remind us of right here is, I'm going to shine my light upon your life. And when I see your sin, I'm gonna pour out grace. When I see what you've done, I'm gonna pour out grace. Now you might say, oh, well, that, that all sounds good, but people say that, no, God says it so much that he sent Jesus to come to the earth to die on the cross to prove it. How much are you loved? You are loved so much that when, even when God sees your sin, even when he sees your brokenness, even when he sees all of the stuff that you've done, his response is give it to me. I'll pay the price. Father, forgive them for they know not what they've done. See, when Jesus was on the cross, he sat there for your sins past, present, and future. And the funny thing is, is there's this doctrine that we don't talk about very much because we talk about propitiation and expi expiation and everybody in the room went, Whoosh. But pro, I'm gonna get this wrong. Propitiation means that he took our sins on him. Expe, expiation actually means that he took all the sins that have been done to us. See, Jesus died on the cross for the sins that we've committed and for the effects of what sins have been committed to us. He set you free. Maybe you walked in here today with such shame 
and such hurt and such brokenness. Maybe you're watching online and right now you're sitting on your couch in your pajamas because of the shame and the hurt that you feel. God sees it. God knows it. And he wants to pour out his grace and his love to you to set you free. See, this is a picture of God, of the revealer. This is who God is, and this is how God loves. This is who God is and how God blesses. He blesses us by walking with us, wanting to be with us. In the garden, in the very beginning, his design was to be with us. It says that Adam and Eve walked with God in the night. Oh, come on. And they were naked. Like, no shame. So this is the part of the sermon where it gets, oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there, are, there are times when things pop in my head and I speak them, and I immediately wish I wouldn't have. <laughs> That will not be in the 11 o'clock. <laughs> but here's the thing, it's beautiful, you guys. In the garden, in the beginning, Adam and Eve were walking with God. They had no shame, they had no fears. They just walked with God, and guess what? That's the way that God wants it to be. And because it wasn't, because we sinned, because we fall short of his glory, time and time again, because of that, he sent Jesus to fix the problem. He sent Jesus to come and set us free. He sent Jesus to be our gap filler so that we could be with him forever. So when the enemy says, because of what you're do you do, hide in the darkness, Jesus says, come bring it into the light and let me take it. So the Lord bless you. When somebody looks at you and says, God bless you, be like, thank you. All I did was sneeze. You're exercising the demons. But here's the thing. Sometimes I think we use that so like flippantly. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Maybe not you. Um, <laughs> just kidding, Mike. God bless you. What we're saying there is, may God bless you. May he, may he shine his face on you, and may he give you grace. And then immediately following that, we all turn into Pastor Jim and preach the gospel. Because ultimately, that's what we're saying. May God bless you. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving. May God keep you. What does that mean? Well, that's in verse 26. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Countenance is a big word. I work with kids. We use small words. I'll keep it simple. May he lift up his face and give you peace. Now, even that doesn't necessarily do it justice because the opposite of countenance in the Hebrew actually means to frown. And so when it says to lift up your countenance, it's actually to smile. It basically, what it's saying here is, how is the Lord gonna keep you? He's gonna smile at you and give you his peace. Now, on the, on the surface, because we're adults, most of us are like, a smile and some absence of war? Absence of conflict? Again, remember how I told you the enemy likes to take words and make them simpler than they actually are? Don't misunderstand this as saying, oh, so God smiles at me and he gives me the absence of conflict. Although those, those sound good, right? This is so much more than that. When it says that he smiles at you, I want you to start to think about that moment when you were a kid. And I know you know the moment. I actually was gonna find a video because I saw it on like Facebook or Instagram or one of those social media platforms that people spend so much time on that I don't spend as much time with so I lose track of things. Anyway, it was a little boy and he's standing, at, or he's coming onto the stage at one of those like dance recitals, or not dance recitals, the choir recitals. You, you guys know what I mean, parents? It's the ones that you're like, <sighs> it's in a huge gym, you're in like row 75, right? You can't hear the kids hardly at all. You have to go through like five different other classes and your kid sings for like three minutes. And you think to yourself, does it really matter? In this video, the little boy walks up onto a spot and he starts looking around. 
And then he spots his parents. And he does this. <laughs> it's the most adorable thing in the world. That smile is what I'm talking about. Because I guarantee he's looking out there in the midst of all of these faces that he doesn't know. In the midst of all of this, he's terrified as he's standing in front of this huge crowd of people. He doesn't want to see. All he wants to find is his mom. All he wants to find is his dad. And he looks out and they smile at him. And the second he sees their smile, something fills him up and makes him filled with joy. See, you guys, this is the moment when it says that God keeps us. It's that he smiles upon us like the father or the mother in the audience that sees him. When you're terrified, when you feel, when you feel like you have no hope, when you feel broken, when you feel in despair, you look out and you see the smile of your heavenly father. And every part of you just goes, yes, it's going to be all right. No matter what battle I'm facing, yes, he's got me. He's never lost a battle. He never will. He smiles upon you and he gives you his peace. Now again, peace in our world has a lot of meaning right now. If you've been following the stuff in Ukraine and Russia, like they're trying to have peace talks and it seems like every time they start to have peace talks, it just gets worse. Hey, here's a peaceful corridor. Not really. And so we look at our world and it's easy for us to so desperately just want peace. If you're in your house, you're sitting there and, and you're, there's constantly, maybe you're in a household right now that you're just in a constant argument with your spouse and you're like, I just want some peace in my house. Maybe you're in a battle with your kiddos right now and they're teenagers and you're like, I just want some peace in my house. It's easy to see how we would just think that it was that simple. But in the Hebrew, the word is shalom. Somebody say shalom with me. And shalom isn't the absence of conflict. Shalom, it could be better translated as wholeness. See, the Lord wants to take your brokenness and he wants to make it whole. How does he do that? He does that through Holy Spirit inside each and every one of us. See, this is God as a soother, is how John Corson says it. God like, John Corson likes to say it, that God, it's 24 is God as a giver, 25 is God as a revealer, and then 26 is God as a soother. He wants to give you peace. You know that discontent inside you? He wants to bring you peace to that. You know that brokenness that you feel from a past hurt? He wants to make you whole again. He wants to take away the wounds. He wants to soothe. He wants to refresh. He wants to renew. He wants to restore. He wants to fill you up. He wants to keep you in his arms. I think of it like a father holding his child in his arms to comfort after the fall. He's gonna keep you. So he wants to bless you and he wants to keep you. Now some of you might be thinking to yourself, man, this sounds like three different verses about who God is. It's almost as if there's three in one. Oh, that's right. The Trinity is fast at work here. God the giver is like God the father. God the revealer is like God the son, Jesus, who came to die for us. And God the soother or the comforter is like Holy Spirit that comforts us and stands in our way. You see, the Lord's blessing is Trinitarian in nature and it is for each and every one of us. But I still feel like there are some people in this room right now. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, that sounds great, but I don't think it's for me. So I want to speak these next words very carefully. The blessing is that God is with us. God is with each and every one of you. He has been, he is, and he will be. See, God is our creator. He created each and every one of us in his image. The most staunch atheist was created in the image of God. 
and uses the breath that the Lord gives him and the brain that the Lord's given him to denounce who God is. And God loves him and wants to bless him and keep him or her. The worst, the worst of the worst, the ones that kill innocent women and children, the breath that they've been given has been given by God and he wants to bless them and keep them. Because don't forget Saul. Saul was, was wretched. He was watching, he was persecuting Christians. He was, he was watching them as they die. He was giving an approval to their deaths. And the Lord met him on Damascus Road and changed his heart and changed his mind and he ended up writing 13 books in the New Testament, you guys. He became as zealous, as zealous as he was against the Lord, he became for the Lord. You see, why is this important? Because I think that when we understand that the blessing is that God is with us, something suddenly changes. Because what that means is that he's always been with you. He always is with you. He always will be with you. He is with you, you guys. He is for you. He sees you. He knows you. He loves you. He has grace for you. He has peace for you. He is all that you need. No matter where you've been or what you've done, he is. And here's the amazing thing. Because of where this is in Numbers, this blessing came before a whole, like you're gonna read this in the reading guide. Suddenly the people of Israel, they forget who God is. When they send spies into Canaan, they already know who God is. God's already told them, I will bless you and I will keep you. I will fight on your behalf. My face will shine upon you. I'll give you grace. My face will be on you and I'll give you peace. I got this. And only Joshua and Caleb come back and say, here's the thing. The giants are big. The giants are scary. The land doesn't seem like it can be overtaken, but we know who God is. When they start grumbling and complaining and fiery serpents come into their camp, that could have been avoided if they would have just remembered who God is. See, I'm telling you this today because some of you are gonna face incredible battles in your life. And when you face them, it's going to be easy to start to lean into your own, your own understanding and your own strength. And what I'm telling you is, is that when you can understand that God blesses you, that he keeps you, that his face shines upon you, that he's gracious to you, that he will turn his face in a smile towards you and give you peace, that when you remember who God is, there is nothing that you can't face. The book of Numbers could look completely different if the people would have just remembered who God was. Okay, I gotta go fast. Sorry, I just looked at the clock. Oh dear, I get preachy. So maybe you're sitting here today and you're like, I've already received the blessing, Ben, now what? Do I just keep receiving it? Yep, you just keep receiving it. But wait, there's more. Because 1 Peter... Chapter two, verse nine, tells us something very important. Take a look. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. See, this, this blessing was to be done by Aaron and the priests over the people of Israel. Right, got that? Who's supposed to give the blessing? Aaron and the priests, right? But in the New Testament, because of what Jesus did, we are a royal priesthood, which means each and every one of us can receive the blessing and go and give the blessing. Each and every one of us gets to go and give the blessing. We get to give the good news of Jesus Christ. We get to tell people, hey, God bless you and keeps you. His face will shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord's gonna smile on you, Josh, and he's gonna give you peace. It's this beautiful thing. We get to go and do it. Okay, so funny, funny story. Any Star Trek fans in here? Okay, seven of you, cool. I'm, I'm not either. So, the guy that plays Spock, live long and prosper, right? Leonard Nimoy? Nimoy? Sure, that guy. Leonard, oh, Leonard actually grew up Jewish. 
And he said that there would be this spot at the end of every single uh, time that they were in that the, the priest would, or the rabbi, sorry, the rabbi would actually declare this over the people and they were supposed to put their faces down and not look. But one day, oh, Leonard looked and here's what he saw. He saw the priest take his hands and put it into the symbol of a, of a Hebrew shim, shin, it's the letter for, it's the Hebrew letter shin, and he would declare this over the people. God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord, may he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And so when his character Spock was coming, and they were coming up with this cute catchphrase, live long and prosper, says that Leonard goes, I remembered the blessing as a kid. And so he did this, and they loved it. Not realizing that this wasn't from another universe or another place, but in fact was from the Bible. So every time you watch Star Trek, God bless you. Okay, I'm gonna end right here. I have a friend. Uh, parents in the room, where's my parents at? Raise your hand. And uh, some of you are like, last time you had me raise my hand, I had to keep it up for a while. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna do that. Parents in the room. Uh, as I was studying this, I realized I wish I would have been praying this prayer over my kids since they were born. My girls are now 13, 16, and 19. And I started praying it over them this week. They didn't know it, but I started praying it over them this week. I have a friend whose mom actually started praying this over her when she was born. Every night, her mom would pray this over her. Time and time again, pray it over her. So much so that she has it locked into her mind. And you don't wanna know what, one of the things about my friend that I would say marks her better than anything else. No matter what comes her way, she never, ever, ever questions or doubts who God is. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that when we pray over our children and when we pray over people, God hears those prayers and he pours out his blessing to them. Parents, don't take this lightly. We have the opportunity to pray over our kids the blessing of the Lord, to declare who he is, to remind them who he is so that they never forget it, so that they can walk with the Lord all the days of their life. I'm gonna have the band come out and we're gonna close right here. I'm gonna pray for us. Father God, thank you so much for how you love us, for who you are. Thank you so much for not just pouring out your blessing to us, but Lord, I thank you so much for using us to pour out your blessing to the people. And so Lord, I pray for the people in this room right now that they would be empowered, that they would take your blessing and that they would take it out into the world that they would be light, that they would recite, and that they would invite people into a, a relationship with you. Lord, pour out right now upon your people. In Jesus' name. Now, before I say amen, I understand that there's really two groups of people in the room right now. There's some of you who have received the blessing already and, and you walk in that blessing every day. And to you, my challenge is, is to go and spread the blessing. Spread it to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to your friends, to your classmates, to everyone around you. Go and spread the blessing. But there are some in this room today that you haven't, you just can't bring yourself to receive the blessing. Maybe it's because you've never heard that you are blessed. Maybe it's because you don't feel like you're good enough to be blessed. Maybe you feel like you've walked in too much junk to be blessed. Maybe you feel like, man, if you knew what I did last night, you wouldn't say that I could be blessed. And I'm here to tell you that the heart of the blessing is that God is with you no matter what you've done. See, in the beginning, God created the heavens, the earth, the seas, and everything in them. He gave us all breath and life, every, everything that we have, every, every part of us. He knows the hairs on every one of our heads, no matter how much you've run from him. In the beginning, he created it perfect. 
But Adam and Eve did what each and every one of us do, do, have done, and we rebel, like, they rebelled against God, they sinned against God, and because of that, sin entered the world, and now each and every one of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And this is a problem because we're now separated from God because a holy God cannot be with those who have sinned and are separated from him. But God had a, a solution, a rescue plan, if you will. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to live a perfect, sinless life, the life that you and I couldn't live. It was a life that was marked by love. And the more that he showed his love to people, the more they hated him. The more he lifted other people up, the more they wanted to lift themselves up. And so they put him to death on a cross, figuring that if they could just kill this man, that they could end it. But just like a seed, when you plant him in the seed in the ground, it emerges beautiful and incredible. And so Jesus hung on a cross, and as he hung on that cross, each and every one of our sins went upon him. And as he sat there on his cross, he could have called himself down. He could have called a legion of angels to come down and fight on his behalf. But instead he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And in that moment, he's separated from the Father because our sins are on him and his beautiful sinless righteousness comes upon us. He says that it is finished and he breathes his last. He dies the death that we deserve to die after living the life that we couldn't live. So if you're here today and you're sitting here thinking, I'm not good enough, he puts his arms out and says, yes, you are. I love you this much. Because you see, it was our sin that put him on the cross, but it was his love that held him there. And they put him in a grave. And on the third day, Jesus rose up from the grave. He conquered sin on the cross. He conquers death in the grave so that we could be with him forever and ever, walking with him so that we could receive his blessing. We could receive his grace. We could receive his peace today. And all we have to do is turn from our sin, receive the blessing that he has for you. And so right now, the band's gonna play. And if that's, um, um, if that's you, I'm gonna invite you to come down to the front here. I'm gonna lead you in a prayer so that you can receive the blessing that God has for you. So I'm gonna invite everybody to stand right now. Church, will you join me in praying? And if, if you're in this room right now and your heart is beating fast and your feet don't wanna go, I'm telling you that this might seem like a big room, but even if it's you way up high, it's only a hundred steps to the front. Don't let a hundred steps stop you from receiving the blessing of God today. Maybe you're joining us online right now and you find yourself right now in your living room on your knees, waving, waving your hand saying, that's me. I just wanna lead you in a prayer right now. Say, Lord, thank you for creating me. Thank you for giving me life. Thank you for giving me everything that I need. I've sinned against you and I'm sorry. Please forgive me of my sins. Help me to turn away, to walk new with you. Fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Restore me anew. I'm yours. I thank you, my creator, my savior, my king. If you just prayed that prayer right now, go ahead and uh, send a text to the number that's on the screen right now just so that we know. For the rest of us in this room, there's three things that I gotta remember to tell you. Number one, over here to my left is a cross. If you need prayer, we'll have a prayer team over there. We would love to be able to pray for you no matter what it may be. We're gonna have that there every single week. So if you need prayer, head over there as soon as we're done. Number two, don't leave. I know that a lot of times when the pastor stops talking, everybody's like, okay, that's time to go. But let's not leave. Let's, let's sing and let's praise him one more time before we go, all right? So just stick it out and then we'll all go together. And finally, number three, can I pray a benediction over you? May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May his face shine upon you and may he be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up his face, smile at you and fill you with his peace. And may you go from this place, spreading the blessing from this generation to the next generation to the next generation. May you be powered. Love you guys. Sing it out and then head out. Thanks again for checking out this video. If you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening here at Love Church, hit the subscribe button or download the Love Church app, which is free on any app store. Have a great week as you continue to experience God's best for your life.